Hello, in this tutorial we'll be going over typecasting and type inspection in the Swift programming language. First, let's go over the basic syntax and then go into more advanced examples. Firstly, what is type? So type is essentially defines what the data is. So it was an integer, a boolean, a string, the multiple different types, and this would be considered a string. So in Swift, type is strongly typed. That means that you have to specify what it would be, and in some cases it infers, so this would be a string. In some cases though, there can be a non-specific type. So for example, this would be a string. But let's say we want an array. So let's do a array, but we're gonna have multiple types. So we could have a string, we could have an integer, a number, we could have a boolean. We could also have a flow. So what would be the type of degree? Here, you can see that we get an error. And that's because the type isn't um, explicitly stated. We don't know what it would be. So in these type of circumstances, we have to explicitly state that it is a list but it, of type any. So this dictates that this list will have any type. Now let's print our list. And here we can see. Another thing we can do is inspect the type. So if we take the first value, so greeting, and the first value, first index, or zero to index, it would be a string. So if the first element in the list is a string, then let's print is a string. Let's run our code. And here we it's printed, it is a string because the first value high is a string. So this is the basics of type casting and type inspection. Now let's go into more advanced examples, and more use cases. So firstly, we have to create a collection of type any. So let's create a number list. So var list one. And it has to be of type any. Now let's create a few doubles, integers, strings, and booleans. So let's do hello uh, seven eighty nine point three true seven false i. 87.3, and another true. Also have a color 23, let's make that 17. Okay, so we have a pretty diverse list with lots of types. And now let's print our list. And it gets printed. So now we have to loop through the collection and for each integer, we have to print the integer has a value of and followed by the value of the integer. And repeat the steps for double strings and booleans. To do this, first let's use a for loop. So for let's say item in list one, let's first see what it is. So if item is of type string, then we can print then we have to say the string has a value of, and we can this time use escape to embed the item. Let's do the same thing for other types. This time, if it's an integer. If it's an int, then the integer has a value of what the integer is, and if it's a float, then the float has a value of the value, and then if it's a boolean, so we have all four, 
then we would print the boolean. And for the boolean, we would have to use bool, so we can remove that. Great, so now it prints each of the values of our list and it tells us it's a what type it is and then the value. So now let's create another string of any dictionary. So this time we're creating a dictionary. So we can say var dict one and then will be of type. So it'll be a string with a, any value. Okay, and now it has to be where the values are mixtures of doubles, integers, strings, and booleans. And we print the key value pairs within the collection. So let's create a similar thing to what we did before. Like this. But then we'll just say one. Okay, and let's add the L here too. Now we could say two. And I'll actually copy and paste this. Great, so now we have created our dictionary. And now let's print our key value pair. So let's print dictionary one. And it prints. Okay. Now we have to create a variable called total of the type double set to zero. We loop through the dictionary and add the value of each integer and double to the variable's value. For each string value, add one to the total. For each Boolean, add two to the total if the Boolean is true and subtract three if false. Print the total value. Okay. So first let's create a variable called total. And we have type double, and we'll set it to zero. Now let's loop through to for item in our dictionary one. Now similar to what we did over here, we'll have to see what type it is. So if it is a string, then we add a one to the total. So we'll do total plus equals one. And if it's an integer, we add the item. So total plus equals item. And if it's a float or a double, let's name this as a double actually. So we'll do double. But also, one more thing. We, since we get a key value pair when we iterate through, iterate through the dictionary, we actually have to specify. So let's say rather than item this time let's do key and let's separate with a comma like it'll come value in dictionary one and now we'll just check if the value is string and if it is so we'll add one if the value is an int and we'll add value and we can all change this to double so i'll go over and Make this a double. Change this to. And if it's a double, we have to add. So we'll do total plus equals double. Oh, and since it's type any, we have to convert it to an int. So this will be an integer and this value will have to also be an integer value. Okay. If it's a boolean, we have to use an if check. So if value is true, then we will do total. Plus equals two. So we're adding two else and we subtract three. So total minus equals three. Okay. Now let's make sure our list has some boolean. Good. And we have to convert this to a double. 
same thing with this. And we also have to make sure that this is a boolean. We'll convert this to a boolean. Okay, now let's run and see. So we cannot convert type any to argument expected type bool. Okay, so we would have to. So the way to fix these errors is to use a different syntax to check if value is an int or not. Because since it's type any, it could be an optional and we could receive a null value. But in this case, we know that these aren't nil, so we can use the if let let if check. So let if let's say this is a double. So let if double is equal to the value. And we'll see if it's an int. So if it's an int, then we'll do total plus double. And we're going to take the double value of our double constant and add it here. And it's an if let. Do the same thing over here. If let. And we'll say double, change this to an int. And these are just the name of variables. So if let double, and value is of type double, then we'll add the double. And here, if let the bool. Is as of type bool, then we'll convert boolean of the bool, and then we'll check. And so we can close this, and actually we can remove the conversion since we're already using the let if if let. Then that means that it is only going to work if it is a bool, and we're not really using the key too, so we can make an underscore. Now we have to print the value of total. We have 227.0. Okay. Now let's create a variable called total2 of type double. And we'll loop the collection again, adding up integers and doubles. For each string you come across during the loop, attempt to convert the string to a number and add the value to the total. Ignore booleans, print the total. So in this case, let's actually have a string. So let's do a similar thing here and let's iterate through our first dictionary. This time we're not going to do anything with the booleans, and we're going to add up all the integers and doubles like before. But for the strings, we're going to attempt to convert the string into a number and add that value to the total. So to do that, we would let's use the if let statement. So if let and let's name this string, and then we're going to take the value, but let's try to convert it to a string. So if we can't convert it to a string, then we're going to add it to the total. First, let's check if the value is actually a string. So let's do if value is a string, then we'll have to convert it. So then we're going to do total equals the int value so into a number so we could even do double of that value and this will be an optional because we don't know if it would be an integer or not so in a special case like this let's make that a string so instead let's actually do another if let statement 
because since it's optional, it could give us a null. So if let string as int, and now we're going to set that equal to our double value of the string that we're getting. And now we can add the total to value, make the total to string as an int. Total two, and I also added a nine like a string so we can see if the total changes. It does, so that's great. Let's continue. So now we have a fitness tracking app that may allow users to track different kinds of workouts. When architecting the app, you may decide to have a workout based class in which other types of workout classes inherit. Below are three classes. Workout is the base class with time and distance property. Run and swim are subclasses that add more specific properties to the workout class. Also provided is a workouts array that represents the log of past workouts. You'll use these classes in the array for the exercises below. Okay. So you have to write a simple function called describe run. So punk and then describe run running workout. And describe swim. So you have to write two functions that take the run object and the swim object. So we'll say run. And then we also have to do a describe swim function. And this one takes in the swim object. So neither should return values and each function should print a description of the workout, including the runner's cadence or the swim stroke. Time is represented in seconds, distance is represented in meters, and cadence is represented in steps per minute. So let's just print, and then we can say the runs cadence is, and then let's use the escape, and let's do run the cadence. And let's also say the time is and then run the time the distance the distance is and then we'll also do 4000 this should print the cadence the runtime and the distance. So let's do distance. Run the distance. So we're actually using type here. We have to use the actual workout we get. So let's replace the run with running workout. And error went away. So let's do a similar thing, but with swim. And swim's actually a bit different. So let's write it out. So let's do print and then the swims stroke is, and then we'll do swimming workout dot stroke. The time is, and the rest is similar. And we'll replace this with swimming workout. Okay, now let's loop through each of the workouts and workouts using typecasting call either describe run or describe swim on each. Now observe what is printed. So typecasting is essentially using the as and question mark or optional to see if it can be. So we'll do for workout in workouts. We will um, if let so if it can let's say if the swim 
can be a uh, workout. So if the workout is a swim, so if the workout is a swim, then we'll let swim equal to that workout. And then we'll call the scribe swim on that swim. And we'll do the same thing with the run. So the run can be described as a run type. Then we'll call the same run over here. And this has to be a running workout. And this should also be a describe run. Okay, and great. So we have actually got all this data into the correct format here, and we're just describing the time, distance, and cadence. Also, to make it a bit more uh, representative, so let's add seconds. So time is seconds. And then the distance is meters. It's always good to be descriptive. And then we'll also do the cadence is in steps per minute. So if steps per minute. And anything that specified a stroke? No. So okay. Great. We have completed this. See you in our next exercise.